Hi, I'm Danny from Practical Mummy Loves Luxury. Welcome to my series of videos for new or expecting parents. Congratulations on your new bundle of joy. Today's video is going to be on activities that you can do and toys that you can play with in the comfort of your own home with your new little bundle of joy. This information is applicable to really young babies. So from the time that they're born to before they can sit independently. So maybe around the age of five months. A few disclaimers before I start the content. Always watch your child to make sure that they're safe during these activities. In regards to the toys, they vary in price significantly. For some of them, it's really obvious why. For example, they may be handmade and therefore you would expect them to be a little bit more expensive. Whereas for others, I can't really tell why one company sells them for more and another company sells them for less. So please do your due diligence and decide for yourself which toy you would prefer to buy for your child to use. All the products will be linked in the description box below. I'm super excited about sharing this video with you. So let's get started. Let's start with a few money and time saving tips. Firstly, don't buy too many toys. It is a very short stage in their life and they will quite quickly outgrow these toys. The other thing is that they will probably need your support to play with these toys anyway. So perhaps of thinking that you will buy a toy and that you will leave your baby with a toy, you could swap it for an activity instead. Another way to save money on toys is that you can check out your local toy library. They often have a huge array of toys suitable from the age of birth up to the age of 12 or something like that. When you're choosing toys to buy, try and stick to ones that are dishwasher safe and ones that you can launder in the washing machine. Also avoid mold prone toys. So they tend to be toys that would collect water in them and they don't have great ventilation. The thing is once they get moldy, you're probably just going to throw them away. Also, there are some rubber toys that are advertised as bath toys. My suggestion is if they look like they're not going to ventilate and dry really well, don't put them in the bath. They're going to get moldy. Moving on to the first thing that I'm going to talk about, they would be black and white books or black and white toys. When a baby is first born, their vision's not very good. The thing is, before they're born, they're essentially living in darkness. So in order for our vision to develop, we require light. So when a baby is first born, they can only really see black and white and only approximately 8 to 12 inches away from their face. It is also not unusual that initially their eyes might be quite sensitive to bright light and they may tend to only want to open their eyes when it is really dim. So you can start with black and white books first and then after that you can move on to high contrast colours. So it's not that you cannot use coloured objects, however black and white objects are probably going to catch and sustain the attention for a little bit longer initially. What I do specifically like about this book is that sure it is black and white but it is also made of cardboard, which means that you can stand it upright on the floor. The other thing about baby's eyes is that they don't focus straight away. So it's common for them to have a squint when they're very young. And my pediatrician told us that in the absence of other developmental issues, a squint is normal up to the age of six months. The next thing is a baby gym. This is very popular because the baby's unable to sit yet. So often the baby can be lying down on the mat on one of these gyms and there's toys hanging overhead. Babies can spend time looking at this and as their development progresses, they can reach for them and practice things like grasp and release. When my daughter was really young, I liked to use this for nappy free time. So nappy free time is literally when the baby is not wearing a nappy. And the purpose of this is so that you can air their skin, especially if they have developed a nappy rash. During nappy free time, there's always a risk that the baby would wee on the gym. So what I would suggest is that a continence mat is put over the gym to catch any wee or poo accidents. And sometimes there will be a spillage onto the gym. My baby gym was machine washable. So if she had a leak on it, I would put it in a washing machine and hang it out to dry. So with these gyms, the prices do vary. It's certainly fine to buy an affordable one online or from Kmart, which is what I did. And of course, you can always splurge if you want to. For example, on screen, I've got this wooden frame. Uh, it is more consistent with Montessori principles where they encourage use of natural products instead of using plastic. 
this frame comes standalone so you would have to put down your own mat and then you could place this frame over the baby. The next thing is a sensory cube. When my daughter was very young, childcare did provide this toy for her to play with and I really liked it because it meant that it didn't roll away, it just sat beside her and she just pulled at all the attachments. And of course, don't forget rattles. So I've got two homemade ones here. This one is just an empty bottle of water that I filled with rice and attached a lint Easter bunny bell on it. This container came with her dummies and I've just put some beads into it and put some tape around it so that she couldn't open it. And of course, you can certainly buy rattles as well. I'm so tempted to shake these as I talk, but I won't. So you can shake them and watch it catch your baby's attention and then you can move it from side to side and watch your baby track the sound as well. As we're all aware, babies put things straight into their mouth. It is also very common to get babies some teething toys. I've got Sophie the giraffe here. Sophie is very, very popular for lots of reasons. So she is irregularly shaped, but she has narrow areas where babies with little hands can hold on to and pick up. She's also very light and she also squeaks. Otherwise, her colors are also relatively high contrast. And I think a lot of mums also favor this because it is 100% natural. It is made of 100% rubber. There are also other Montessori inspired toys that are made of 100% wood. This other one that I've got on screen, I call it a galaxy because that's what it reminds me of. It is very multi-dimensional and it's also got narrow areas that little hands can hold on to. And the cube in the middle is also a rattle. The next thing that I've got is a plush book. So it is soft and it is also crinkly. So crinkly sounds are very stimulating to babies. When I used to squish this book, my daughter would instantly turn her head to look at it. The other really stimulating sound to babies is Velcro. So yeah, another way to catch your baby's attention. This book specifically is from Kmart. They don't always have exactly the same book, but they have very similar variations. This book has a plastic mirror in it, which allows me to segue perfectly into plastic mirrors. So this is just one that I've got sitting in the car. However, there are lots of baby toys that come with plastic mirrors because babies do like looking at faces. And this is why they enjoy the company of mom and dad so much because they like looking at the details of the face and they like watching our expressions. So if you present a mirror to a baby, they will likely look at their own face and quite enjoy studying themselves. Of course, initially they won't know that they're looking at themselves, but that's okay. The next thing I'm going to talk about is balls. So on screen, I have a set of balls that have varying textures and colors. Otherwise, they're also these regular play balls. They're quite small, so babies could hold them with two hands. They're plastic and they're really light. So if they hit your baby, they're not likely going to cause too much harm. And once your baby is old enough to sit, you can literally repurpose these balls as ball pit balls. In terms of larger balls, there's this one here, which is a knobby ball. So it's full of little knobs on it. So the knobs make it really textured and very grippy. So it's easy for little babies that don't have a lot of grip strength to hold on to them. What's really funny is that um, because it looks like a whole bunch of nipples. <laughs> when my daughter was really young, she used to try and feed off this ball. <laughs> Otherwise, there's also smoother bounce balls and also beach balls. They're all very light and soft. So they're very unlikely to cause injury to your baby. So I talked about a plastic mirror before. Other than using a small portable plastic mirror, you can also lay a long mirror on its side and lie your baby next to it. If your baby is unable to independently lie on their side, you can prop them up with a towel against their back. And again, your baby will have an opportunity not only to look at their face, but also their entire body. And they will very likely enjoy checking themselves out for a short while. Once they outgrow this and become more active, certainly be careful with regular mirrors because they're fragile and a baby could potentially get hurt from breaking a mirror. You can hang mirrors on the inside of your cupboards and do various mirror activities with them. And here's some footage of myself with my baby when she was four months old and I used to just sing all these random songs in front of the mirror with her.
Baby bouncers are also a very popular option. This props the baby up a little bit so that they can see what's going on. With some of these baby bouncers, as the baby kicks, the bouncer will bounce as well. And a lot of these bouncers nowadays come with a massage function. And who remembers this scene from a very popular 90s series? Bear in mind though, it is not advised for babies to be sleeping in these bouncers because if they don't have a ton of tone or strength in their neck yet, there's a risk that they could suffocate in their sleep when their neck is flexed. The next thing is a crib mobile. These are super cute and I certainly owned one myself. So these toys you hang over the baby's crib and they play really nice music and they have dangling bits that rotate as well. Now is this a piece of equipment for play or for sleep? I'm not really sure. I think it really depends on how you decide to use it. You either use it for play only or sleep only. But not both because that could potentially confuse the baby about whether it's playtime or sleep time. Moving on to the activities that you can do with your child. The first one is creating a draft or a sense of wind against the baby. The sensation of wind often can be very stimulating to a baby. You can certainly create this by just manually blowing in their face or blowing against their body. Otherwise, you can fan them with a book or a paper fan. You can use a portable fan or you can wave a muslin cloth over them. Using music is also a really popular option. You can either play nursery rhymes or classical music. Personally, I'm also really keen on my baby being multilingual, so I do play Mandarin nursery rhymes for her. The next thing is to also play peekaboo. You can do that with your hands, Ooh. or you can do that with a muslin cloth. When babies are very young, they don't have a concept of object permanence yet. So when they no longer see you, they think that you're actually gone. And hopefully they're really happy when they see you come back. The next activity is a baby massage. So often this is done in a warm room. The baby can be completely naked or in their nappy and you would use baby oil. And this can be a really great opportunity for bonding. Some parents use the massage to wind the baby down. I'll leave some links in the description box below. There are lots of different ways of doing it and I think it's just about finding one that you feel happy doing. The next thing is sensory play. You can lay your baby down on a surface. They can be in their nappy or they can be naked and you rub various surfaces against their skin. So you can use different objects with various textures. You can use hard objects, soft objects, cool objects, warm objects. So as an example, you can use cotton balls, you can rub handkerchiefs or towels, plastic spoons, or you can use your own massager as well. And of course, you can also tickle them. The next thing is tummy time. So clearly this is again a very popular activity. The purpose of tummy time is to encourage your baby to lift their heads so that they can develop head control and eventually trunk control so that they can eventually crawl. So you can do tummy time by placing the baby on your chest and that way they can lift their head off your chest. The other option is to lay them on their tummy on the floor. From the floor, it is actually a little bit more difficult for them to push up and some babies don't really like it. What you can do is you can place a towel under their chest and that will prop them up a little bit until they get a bit stronger and then you can stop using the towel. The next thing is just hanging out with mom and dad. This is usually one of the baby's favorite activities because it is so stimulating. You're literally there providing the entertainment. <laughs> but really, babies enjoy listening to the sound of their parents' voice. They like watching their parents do stuff. They like looking at the expressions on our face. And of course, they enjoy things like cuddling. You can sing to them. And don't hate me for this, but I sang the Backstreet Boys to my daughter. You can also read to them. So what I've been told is that when they're really young, it doesn't really matter what you read to them. It's fine to read grown-up books to them as long as you feel that it's appropriate for your child. It is when you notice that they are focusing on the pages that you might like to change them over to children's books because often those images might be easier to see and those words might be easier for them to see as well. Babies also really enjoy just their parents talking to them. And you can talk to them about anything. You know, I'll give you a list to start with. You can talk about where you grew up, 
You can talk about your partner. You can talk about how you met your partner. You can talk about your parents, your favorite things to eat, your favorite places to travel, and so on and so forth. And those are all my tips for today. My next video is going to be on baby products that I would not buy again. To make sure you catch that video, certainly subscribe and turn on notifications. If you liked today's video, please give me a like, leave me a comment. That will make a huge difference to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.